So blockchains are really useful because they provide a way for organizations that don't really know each other to do business online securely, not just to move money back and forth, but to actually have contracts that say, the contract can say something like, I will pay you when you deliver this, and when the delivery is recorded on the blockchain, the payment is executed. So it's a way to do a full cycle of business online in a trusted and secure way. Do payments have to be involved in the transaction? Actually, no, payments don't have to be involved. Blockchains are really useful just for information sharing and synchronization. But we think that the value proposition of doing this technology grows substantially when you include not just sharing the information and doing the contract, but closing the loop with payment. To many people, blockchain is still an abstract idea. So how do organizations go about accessing the technology? Our focus at EY has been on thinking through this question of how companies can access this technology. And really, we're looking to do this by making it embedded in their existing systems. So most companies run their business on something called ERP. It's like a big IT system that manages procurement and spending and resources. We're making it possible for you to issue a purchase order from your company's IT system, and that will run through the blockchain. So you won't have to learn, learn anything new. You won't have to activate new processes. How confident can we be that the information going into the blockchain at the entry point is truthful and correct? This is gonna be one of the big challenges of blockchains. So right now, for things like Bitcoin, everything that's ever been in Bitcoin started in Bitcoin. But for the kinds of blockchains that we're looking at in the real world, we want to keep track of assets or containers or cars. For those, we need to think about auditing. Auditing used to be about, what did, you, did you do what you said you did? In the future, it's going to be about, before you put this piece of information in the blockchain, let me make sure that it's truthful. Well, you mentioned Bitcoins, but what is the future of finance on the blockchain? You didn't seem to be too convinced when you were speaking about Bitcoins. So there's a legitimate use for cryptocurrencies, but for most companies and most people, we get paid in dollars or euros or pounds, right? We uh, have our expenses in dollars, euros and pounds. So if we're going to use blockchains, it makes sense for us to use them in the currencies that we're already doing business in. And we call that, or that's increasingly called programmable money, right? So it's all the features of a cryptocurrency, but in your currency that you're used to dealing with. What are your thoughts on Gibraltar's DLT regulatory framework and how does that position us in a global context? I think it positions Gibraltar very well. The things that investors care about or really should care about is the rule of law in their business process. If I invest in a blockchain technology or cryptocurrency, I don't want to worry about whether or not my funds are being put to use properly or whether there's uh, the rule of law involved. I want to make an investment in the technology or the industry. So trying to remove some of the risk is very attractive to investors. And the more risk you take out, the more capital you will attract. What do you think our two countries can really learn from each other in this space? I think one of the things that impresses me about some smaller countries that I've spent time in is the collaborative nature of politics and the agreement that politicians are able to get to take action. So in a system like the US, we have a lot of checks and balances. There's a lot of participants. Uh, and so big legislation to take advantage of technological change takes a long time. Right? Just getting everybody in the room to agree is very difficult. In the smaller countries, you can get those decision makers in a room, you can get an agreement, and you can try something out. What's your advice to countries really looking to access and develop blockchain technology? The one other thing that countries should think about is not just a regulatory environment, but the skills that are required. So blockchains are really this intersection of business operational skills, financial services, and software development. And it's actually hard to find people who understand enough of those different items that you can build a software development center and execute. So building local skills is very important for attracting participants.